So you join us in the little fishing town of Cullen, home of the famous Cullen Skink, and we found this guy sitting at the side of the road with the scorpion in the steering wheel and the spider in the gear stick. Thought it was quite a cool truck. I asked him if we could swap, but he said no. So Cullen Skink is basically a broth of haddock, potatoes and onions. It's very famous in the area. So, this journey was basically where we left you last time with the seals, all the way through Bucky, down through Banff, and we are hugging the coast of north of Scotland, down through Fraserburgh. We skipped Peterhead as a major town and ended up in Cruden Bay. So hopefully you'll enjoy the video. Cullen's a lovely little town. We had a wander round. Uh, it was very windy and hence most of this video is going to be voiceover because the microphones that we have are pretty good but even 40 mile an hour winds in Scotland give some pretty poor sound quality. The town itself is uh, famous for its fishing and also puts a new perspective on mobile banking. I love these little towns because they, they get all sorts of stuff. Uh, even the small remote ones of remote fish and chip vans that turn up on a Friday and a Thursday for people. So there's no need to go without at all. We had a little wander down and uh, this is a stunning bit of coastline. The bay itself looks absolutely lovely and it would be absolutely beautiful in the summer. We just happen to be here in March. The weather is not too kind. Lovely little beach. We did a little bit of googling eh, to see what was around in the area and we found Findlater Castle which is about a five minute walk from this car park. Very easy access eh, and it gives an opportunity to get the drone up as you know I like to do. Hell of a windy, right on the coast. There's not a lot of it left these days. But it's an interesting sort of viewpoint to go and see if you're in the area. The first historical reference to the castle is from 1246. King Alexander III of Scotland repaired the castle in the 1260s in preparation for an invasion of King Hakon IV of Norway. The Norwegians took and held the castle for some time and the castle remains that are still there are from the 14th century rebuilding when the castle was redesigned based on the Rosling Castle model. Here's a fun fact. James V of Scotland visited Findlater in November 1535. After a pilgrimage to Tain, the Laird of Findlater and Ogilvy was master of the household to Mary of Guise. He lost his inheritance following sexual misconduct with his mother-in-law and making a plan to imprison his father in the cellar to deprive him of sleep and drive him insane. After his father's death, his mother married John Gordon, the son of the Earl of Huntley, who then took possession of the castle and the lands and promptly imprisoned the mother. What goes around comes around, eh? What a story. Moving on from Finlater Castle, we ventured further down the coast to a place called Port Noki. This is a site of the famous Bow and Fiddle Rock. So I endeavoured to take some photographs. It's very easy to find, uh, you just drive down to the back of Port Noki and follow this path and it gives you a sterling view of the area. The wind was howling again, so there was no point in trying to record anything. She was absolutely boiling, and the idea was to try and slow down the sea and make a nice little photograph, which I hope I've done. So here's a couple of images from the day. 
I'm quite chuffed with them. The next day we visited Slane's Castle, which is a lovely place. Uh, it was owned and occupied up to 1928 until the multi-millionaire that owned it took the roof off it to avoid paying taxes and then the locals ransacked it and this is how it stands today So, thanks for watching if you're still here. Here's some images that I captured with the drone and with the camera uh, around Slane Castle. Definitely worth a visit. And thanks for watching this far. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's been an incredibly horrible couple of days. Uh, we've really just been sheltering in St. Cyrus. Small trip to Montrose, our growth, but really just constant rain. There's just nothing to see or do in this weather. So we've been hiding in the truck and a little bit of R&R. We're off to Devil's Elbow, which is supposed to be a nice little drive. So we'll take you up there. So we find ourselves just entering the Cairngorm National Park. It's been a wet, rainy drive, but it's cleared up now, it's stopped raining at least. And we have some snowy hills, which is fantastic, because that's what we're looking for. So we're about three miles from Glen Shee, which is a ski resort in Scotland. I don't think there's much skiing this year, but we're going quiet. Pulled into a little lay by there. They gave us a lay of the land. The devil's elbow. It's a little further on. We're in the Cairngorms National Park, and this road runs 93 miles to Granton on Spey, which is back in the whiskey district of the Lower Highlands. Just in front of you there is Glen Shee Ski Resort. It's a little quiet. We are in April right enough, so the ski season's finished in most countries. Well, there's a few people dotted around. You can actually camp here. Uh, plug in just up to the left right behind those skips. Five pounds an eight is electric pickup. So we're in a little valley between the Glen Shee Ski Centre and the Lecht Ski Centre. It's a beautiful place, the Cairngorms. There's not much to see today with the clouds right around. But I've put the drone up, so you can expect a medley. Some photos and some tunes.